When you come to Grand Teton National Park, you might be thinking, I want to try some out of the way places, maybe a little different rather than the main park entrance and Ginny Lake and all that. Well, I've got a place for you. It's called the Lawrence S. Rockefeller Preserve. This beautiful parking location plus an incredible building and excellent trails is a great way to get away from things and try something different than the usual tried and true. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you a few clips of the location and tell you more about the building here. The Lawrence S. Rockefeller Preserve is really a beautiful location nestled in Grand Teton National Park along the Moose Wilson Road. This road connects Teton Village, or called Jackson, uh, it was a Jackson Hole Mountain Resort, and then it connects up to Teton Park Road right near the Visitor Center in Grand Teton. When you go along the Moose Wilson Road, you'll see the sign with the little green uh, pine needle job and the nice text here and you turn in and assuming you didn't get here late and uh, fail to find parking you can actually hike around and enjoy the location also there's a beautiful building in here that has a soundscape room that's really fascinating you'll hear birds and chirping and thunderstorms it's really fascinating just to sit and zen to experience it. They also have a beautiful library and an ecological display and it looks like they actually made support conferences. I'm not exactly sure about that but it's well worth popping in and learning a little bit more about the area. This is also a great jumping off point if you want to hike to Phelps Lake. There are two trailheads. One is Death Canyon Trailhead and then the other is the Lawrence S. Rockefeller Preserve or LSR and these both are great locations to access Phelps Lake. If you go to the Death Canyon Trailhead you've got to hike over the ridge versus coming to LSR the hike isn't as tough so that's a consideration to do to get your experience in Grand Teton National Park in a different area. Now Granted, parking here is a bit crazy, I'll show you that in a moment, but it's nothing like Ginny Lake and String Lake. So if you want to take the load off and try a different location with a family-friendly hiking location, this is it. So let's go check that out. As you can see, there's a uh, park service parking lot attendant that manages the parking here. And you see that car facing me, there's a whole line and loop, probably about 12 or 14 cars that are waiting for parking. So if you want to come in the on season, in the height of the season, and you want to find parking, make sure you show up early because simply it can get crazy. It's uh, about 10:30 uh, right now and it's been full for quite a while. So if you want to come here in the height of the season, July and August, show up before 8 a.m. Otherwise you're going to be waiting for parking for hiking. Just a consideration. But the nice thing is once you get that, there's a beautiful restroom, high quality facilities. Now what I'm going to do is walk on the trail a bit, show you what the trail's like, and show you the beautiful building. Even the restroom building is incredibly nice here. They spent some money on this thing. Woo! Once you find a parking space, which can be a challenge as you can see here, because people are waiting, you can come over to this kiosk and it'll show you the different distances and times, whether you want to spend just an hour and a half hiking, or three plus hours, or even four plus hours hiking around the area. Now, it's actually quite a challenge to choose because the location's beautiful. The Phelps Lake hike all the way around the lake is pretty incredible. But no, that's about four plus hours of hiking to get around that lake because just this distance here is 1.7 miles connection. So in theory, you'd loop around, but it takes a lot longer because the trail has ups and downs and variations and invariably you're gonna wanna stop and take pictures. And over here, there is the famous jumping rock made famous by the locals. They uh, take pictures, post on Instagram and things like that. So that is something to consider too. I'm not condoning jumping off tall rocks into lakes that you can't see the bottom of, but hey, you do what you want to do. Now what I'm going to do is take you on the trailhead and take you over to the building and show you a little bit of it. 
The nice part about the walk over to the building is it's a very flat trail. It only gains a few feet of elevation, rolls around, so it looks like it's handicap accessible even for folks in wheelchairs. So if nothing else, you can come and enjoy the beautiful building and the incredible views of the village, Rendezvous Mountain, Grand Teton, Tiwanat, just about everything. At this end of the building is the acoustic room. I can't remember what the official name about it is, but it's got a few seats and then soundboard, some uh, lights and whatnot, but it's really incredible just to sit in there even for 10 minutes and just to listen to the cycling of the sounds. I've actually never seen anything like this in any other national park, but maybe there are some are, are uh, out east. But when it's open, boy, it's a really unique experience. This is an original water fountain, that's for sure. Inside this building is a beautiful wood hall where you can go in and ask rangers all sorts of information about the area. In front they have information on elk, moose, mule deer, black bear, coyotes, pikas, and of course the bears. And as you walk along here you can see a beautifully set up National Park Service sign. I've probably never seen one so shiny because it's well protected from the weather, but as you can see just walking along here, this beautiful wood, and it's pretty incredible, and even though I can't go inside, you can just look inside there, see the lights are on, and you can see the incredible library collection they have. It's really pretty nice, and it's a great sitting area, fireplace, and everything else. Now here, depending on the season, they also have a kiosk, and right now they have a Know Your Berries, which are which ones are edible and not edible. I'm not very good at berry identification, so you have to really be careful about it, but if you have the chance to find these things, yum, yum. And in the back of the kiosk, there's a little more information about big nests and tent caterpillars and all sorts of other flowers. So the LSR preserve area is really worth visiting, especially with the family and kids because there are interactive things you can touch and feel. It's really pretty fun. I mean, it's something that's quite a gem to people who come here and the nice thing is the restrooms are super high quality. It's just not a, a hole in the woods as it was. My name's Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please like and comment on this video, and if you found it useful, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and enjoy your adventures!